All right, guys, here's a quick video that I just wanted to make um, on how to remove objects using the content aware fill feature in Photoshop CS5. Um, this has happened to all of us. You, you get a great photograph, and then you have some punk in the back trying to throw the whole thing off, and, uh, you know, there's not much you can do about it. Um, you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, what my technique is in, in removing, you know, objects from the background, and, and here it is. Let's, let's get rid of them. Um, so here, I've selected my buddy in the back there with the f successful photo bomb, and we'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll actually go through and select the left side of the photograph, put it on its own layer. And so any manipulations we make to that side of the photograph will will be just, you know, on that side. It won't affect the whole picture. And so we'll select it, hit copy. And then we will paste it um, through layer via copy onto its own new layer. So as you'll see here, it's on uh, a whole different layer. And what we'll do after we're done is merge the two layers to, to get a, a complete picture again. So let's go through and select our friend again. And, and this part will blow your mind. You hit Shift Delete and let Photoshop do the rest. This would have taken and has taken anywhere from half an hour to an hour to kind of have to actually manually by hand go through and and pull somebody out of the picture. The software now will go through and look at the neighboring pixels of the selection and, and kind of do its best guess for what should have been there. Um, it's one of the biggest time savers. Um, uh, and I can't stress how much um, help it really is. I mean, as you can see, it's not perfect. You can always go in by hand and do some um, some editing afterwards, but I mean, a lot of that I can attribute to the fact that I made a very hasty selection. Um, I've seen some people do some amazing stuff with the uh, with the content aware fill. But what we'll do here is we'll zoom in a little bit, and I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of a ghostly outline of my friend there. So we'll use the clone stamp and and kind of try to get rid of it. And again, we're only working on that left side of the picture. And uh, we don't want anything to spill over onto the uh, um, the girls in the foreground. And I just want to mention, I mean, I'm by no means anything better than average at this. I'm not an expert. Um, this is just something that I've picked up along the way, and it works pretty well for me. And I've integrated it into, you know, my amateur workflow. Um, but like in a scenario like this, where I, I mean, for my friend's wedding, I think I have, um, around 200 photographs that, you know, I want to get to them, but I want them to be of the utmost quality. And so there's a, there's a line that you have to tread to where, you know, I, I want to get them to them fast, but I want them to be of the best quality and tools like this in Photoshop really help you efficiently manage, um, your time here. I mean, out of 200 pictures going through for 10, 15 minutes at a time with maybe 10 shots to make them look absolutely perfect is really um, not too much to ask for, I don't think. Um, but there you go. I mean, it looks pretty good. What we'll do, uh, what we'll do here is kind of, uh, it's kind of cheating. I don't really like doing this. I don't do it a lot. Um, but for, you know, for the sake of what we're doing here, um, you can use, uh, you know, a filter or two here and there to kind of mask some of the quick and dirty editing we've done. So if you go through and uh, look at a lot of these filters, uh, the blur filters particularly work pretty well. Um, the lens blur is is by far what I think looks the most natural. It really does a good job of simulating the kind of bokeh um, depth of field that you would get from an SLR camera lens. Um, but we'll go through and add a little bit of a blur here. And that looks about right. And this isn't going to be anything too drastic or too noticeable. It's just something that will kind of help us um, get away with not spending too much time on that. We'll hit OK. As you can see, it, I mean, this isn't anything too noticeable, but it does help us out a little bit. I just want to go through with the clone stamp and maybe get rid of some of that floating pink 
in the background there but i mean from the most part you know as you can see here i mean just by removing you know the guy in the back you do such a big um such a big help to the foreground elements of the picture and again i want to stress if this is for a serious project or something that you're going to enlarge you want to spend a lot more time with these edits but you know for a simple facebook photo or something that's going to end up in maybe um you know some small prints it's not absolutely essential But yeah, I mean, this content aware fill, it really helps you in, in bringing out the best of your photographs. And um, I mean, uh, this is a, 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 a great photograph of these two girls, but, you know, getting rid of um, my friend there kind of uh, gives this photograph some merit rather than having it be some kind of comedic thing. Right, and as you can see here, after flattening the image, you kind of get a little bit of a crease, a visible crease um, that we can soften out using the clone stamp again. I won't take too much time on this, but. Using a slightly less opaque stamp here uh, really helps to make it look not too um, eye-catching. We'll go for a smaller brush. Okay, and I would say that looks about okay. And then that should be um, the end of our edits there. What we can do here to, to kind of close this off is to do a couple of final adjustments. Um, we'll go in and adjust the levels. And this will just make sure that we have the appropriate amount of black and white in the picture. Um, that looks about right. Maybe a little darker. Ooh, too dark. Okay. Well, uh, another thing we can do is, I don't know if you can see in the video, but the picture kind of has a overly orange hue to it. Um, that's just due to the natural lighting there. Uh, what we can do to kind of make, to kind of counter that is to desaturate the picture just by a little bit. So we'll go into the hue saturation and we'll take it down maybe negative 10 or so. In my experience, anything more than 15 or 20 um, kind of washes out the picture, but a negative 10 gives that a really um, solid tone. So we'll go through, save that as a, a separate file. Make sure not to overwrite the source one. And let's see if we can get you a before and after here. That's what I love about Photoshop. You can do things you can't do in real life. You can get rid of people. You can make the world how you want it. Now I'm just teasing. The guy in the back is a great friend of mine, but he's not needed in this shot. So there you go. There's the original source file. And let's see if we can just pull up the one we just saved the edits to. Uh, there it is, I think. There we go. And there you have it. There's your before and after, and as you can see, you take, you know, somewhat of a jokey snapshot to, to an actually good-looking photograph. And I've used this technique on a handful of other um, shots. Here's another example of one. This is a picture that was taken of me and my siblings a couple months ago, and as you can see here, it looks like a great shot, but there's a lot of distracting elements that I had to get rid of here using that content aware fill. Uh, it's just one of the edits that I've made to the picture here, but... All right, that was Content Aware Phil. Thanks for watching.